Hey YouTube, Donnie Smith here, and in this video we're going to show you how to apply some primer sealer and then we're going to show you how to blend within a panel some waterborne base coat and then we're going to apply some clear coat. All right, we have got this fender primed and blocked, and now we're ready to wash it and get it ready for the spray booth. And I'm just rinsing it off some water, you know, get the underside real good because a lot of dirt is trapped under there. You want to make sure all that dirt's out now so it doesn't end up in the paint. So just uh, spraying it off real good, and then I'm going to get, then I'm going to wash it. Now I'm just using a, a soap, you know, car soap, but it does not have silicone in it. Make sure it's silicone free. And I'm using a scuff pad. You know, just to make sure, it's just like a, the final time to make sure everything is sanded right. You know, and just uh, using that scuff pad to wash it is basically all I'm doing. So I'm going over the entire fender, you know, especially on the edges and hard to get areas. And once it's good and washed, then I can uh, rinse it off. Now this is going to help, you know, remove all silicones and, you know, make sure it's nice and clean. All right, now I have got the, the primer sealer here. And I'm going to mix that up. I'm just using mixing cups. You can use the computer system, which is really more accurate. But this works. If you don't have a computer system, these cups work fine. And you just look up the mixing ratio, and it'll tell you on the cup, you know, what that is. And then you mix it up. I believe this is 311, uh, three parts primer, one part catalyst, one part reducer. And another thing about primer sealer, you know, it's all about the shade, uh, the gray shade you know what needs to go underneath that color and the way you find that out whenever you mix this paint coat it's going to tell you you know uh, this uses a, like a G5, G3 uh, but you know it will tell you you know what shade of gray should be under there and that helps you get the correct color and our computer system like I said whenever you go to mix it up it'll tell you which one to use if not there's some charts out there that can help you out to give you an idea of, of how dark or light the the gray shade should be and this is going to help you have you know the color match much better okay now notice that I'm using a regular paint gun here with a cup uh, I use some paint strainers you know be sure that you do use paint strainers if you're not using like the 3M PPS system now I'm going around you know we've already washed the fender but just going around some wax or grease remover make sure it's good and clean you know, because we don't want no contaminants, we don't want no fish eyes or anything like that. So we're going to go around, and this is a solvent-based uh, wax and grease remover. And I was at a PPG school, and they said it's best on this waterborne paint to go around with a solvent cleaner and then go around with a waterborne-based cleaner. They say the waterborne-based cleaner really does a lot better job of removing things like hand print, uh, hand prints and things like that. No sight, I'm wearing gloves now. You don't want to touch the surface after this point. So get it all wiped down good. And notice I didn't have a, a spray bottle for this waterborne solvent or this waterborne uh, cleaner. So I put it on a wet rag and then I wipe an area down and then I use a dry one to dry it off. Now you want to do a small area at a time. You don't want to wipe the whole panel down and then dry it at one time because it may dry on its own before you're finished drying it. And that's something you don't want to do. You want to be sure that you dry it off with the towel and not let any dry on its own. Now this is a waterborne type of tack cloth. Notice I opened it up and I kind of popped it. You kind of have to open it like that. You kind of have to pop it to release the adhesive in it. Now this is a lot less uh, tacky than your regular tack rags, but they do a really good job. I mean there's never any lint that comes off of them or anything. They, they really do a good job. Now I've got a little self etch primer. I had just a few uh, metal spots, so I just wanted to touch those up. I let that dry for five to ten minutes, and now I am ready to spray the sealer, primer sealer. And I've got three spots on here that I am primer, you know, using the primer sealer and painting. Now there's enough of this fender. It probably could have went ahead and painted the whole fender, you know, because I am blending into the hood and the door. But uh, for this video purpose, you know, I want to demonstrate how to blend within a panel and then also in other videos where I'm blending the hood and door, you know, I'll show you that too. But notice how with the sealer up there, I'm kind of shooting away from the center of that fender because I don't want a bunch of overspray landing over there. Because if you get overspray all down the middle of that fender, well, you're going to have to paint that whole fender. So you don't want to do that because we're trying to blend. Now, this is a viscosity cut. 
and it measures the paint's viscosity. And this is, you know, with waterborne, can be really handy. Let's say you had some left over. Of course, it's going to get thicker because some of the water evaporated, so you don't know how much to reduce it with the uh, waterborne reducer. So you measure it, and it'll tell you, you know, if it's in between 18 and 24, whatever the technical data sheet says, you know it's right. If it's too thick, you're going to have to add some more reducer to it. So we measured this one. It, you know, it was right. I'm having Jake time it. And you pull it up, it has a hole in the bottom, and you time how long it takes the paint to go through the hole, you know. And after you see the stream, stream break for the first time, that's when you stop it. So, like I said, with solvents, this is not as important because it's more of a, you know, 311. Well, waterborne's not really that way, you know. You just want the right viscosity so that it'll spray right. Um, Waterborne doesn't have a catalyst or anything like that. You know, it's just a, it just takes a reducer. So getting everything cleaned up, and that's a good idea with waterborne too. I mean, it, if you let that stuff set up, it is hard to clean. Now I've got the spray gun in there. I am getting all of the air out of the liner, and that just allows you to spray in different angles without an interruption in your stream pattern. Getting the gun set right. And I can start spraying the base. Uh, and notice that first I'm going to go around, I'm going to do the inside, the jam areas. And the reason I do that is because I want to spray those and then do the outside of the fender. Because if I do it the other way, spray the outside of the fender and then come back and do the, the jams, you know, it might have some metallic kind of set on there a little bit different. So I want to be sure that, you know, that the outside looks the same and there's no, uh, differences from where I sprayed it from the outside so just helps a uh, helps metallic lay down better and now I'm putting on the first coat of base and notice that I am well I'm kinda in the way there but I, I kinda get busy and forget but I'm not doing the whole panel I'm just going past the sealer area I'm not so worried about not uh, getting it in the center you know I am letting some of that overspray go over there but I'm doing just the sealer area and then I'll put on another coat and go out a little further and with waterborne, it's necessary to uh, use a dryer, like an air dryer. You know, it's not heat, it's just air to help dry that. Now, some booths are equipped with that where you don't have to use these handheld dryers, but this one is not. And basically, it uses the, uh, the air in the booth, the movement, and that little hand dryer kind of helps recirculate that to help it dry faster. Now, something with base coat, you, during, during your uh, sealing process or base coat, if you have any problems, you can fix them. Like right here, you know, I had a little bit of dirt, a few things in it. It was sitting on top, so I just used a tack rag to kind of wipe them off. Now, if it was embedded in there, you know, I would need to lightly sand it, you know, and then put another coat on. But, all right, I'm putting a second coat on, doing the same thing, going around the outside edges, and then I'll do the center section. And I'm going to go out a little bit further with this blend. But I'm still not doing the entire panel. And getting all three spots, get another coat on. And now I'll have to come back and use it, dry it again with an air dryer. Now one thing I do want to mention whenever you're using these uh, dryers, you don't want to get too close. If you get too close, you might put little ripples in that, you know, when it's wet. So just kind of stand back. It's actually, like I said a minute ago, it's using the, the, the airflow in the booth, helping recirculate that. And I know this sounds like an extra step, you know, having to dry it, but really it's not. Because really it's a lot faster. With, you know, solvents, you have to put a coat on, allow it to dry for the recommended time, put another coat on. I mean this, you put it on as soon as it's dry, as soon as it flashes and you see it dull out. Uh, you're ready to put another coat on and if you have some dirt or whatever you can lightly sand it and then put another coat on so really it's a lot faster you're in the booth more I mean you know don't, don't have time between coats you know to to uh, mess around or whatever but I mean it, it really is faster so get the next coat on going out a little bit further with this blend and there I'm in the, in the way again and uh, you know, like I said, I just get busy and forget about that sometimes, so. 
trying to get better at that as I go on with these videos. This is some old footage, by the way. I lost it for a long time, and I just found it. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this video series. I mean, this is actually from a couple of years ago. So I had some more stuff that I'm getting out, probably some dirt or lint or something like that. And notice I'm kind of using the air, too, to blow it off as I'm brushing it so that it blows it away from the fender. And now I'm just going to spot those, those spots in just lightly. And now I'm going to readjust the gun. This is a tight coat and that you need to do with waterborne. I turn the pattern wide open, turn the pressure down to about half, and now I'm going further. It's a real fast coat. You hold the gun about 12 inches away, so you hold it pretty far back. Go real fast and overlap real tight. All right, I got the clear coat mixed up, and now we are ready to start clear coating. And I'm going to do the same thing, you know, with the edges, because I don't want overspray landing on the outside of the fender, which may give it a dry appearance or something like that. So I always leave that outside for last. So I'm going to put two coats of clear coat. And notice with the clear coat, I am doing the entire fender, both coats. You know, I'm not just doing a, a blend or anything like that. I'm doing the entire fender, you know, with nice overlaps, 50% overlap, nice and even. And clear coat, you know, you want to put it on there wet. Most clear coats recommend full wet, you know, because you want it really glossy. You know, unless you're spraying some of the mats or something like that, you know, maybe a little bit different. But now I'm coming around the second coat, doing the outside again, and then I'll, or insides, the jams and areas, and I'll come back and do the outside. And remember this last coat, you want to put it on nice and glossy. You really want to lay it out, lay it out there. This is where you're going to take some practice, you know, from getting runs because you try to put it on too wet, you're going to get runs. So you just kind of, kind of find that spot where it's not dry, but you're, you know, you don't get any runs either. So that's just going to take some practice. So I'm putting this last coat on, you know, nice and even, 50% overlap, and then uh, we will have this fender ready and we can bring the car in here and get it ready so and then we can put it all back together As always, thanks for watching these videos. I really appreciate that. If you like the video, be sure and give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Uh, subscribe to us if you hadn't. Share this with your friends. And remember, if something's worth doing, do your best and have a blast doing it. Thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you in the next video.